In 1997, a helicopter flew into a compound in the Middle East. Four men captured a terrorist leader and tied him to a chair. One of them, Harry Hart, also known as Galahad, threatened the terrorist, demanding answers. Suddenly, the terrorist revealed a grenade pin in his mouth. Harry's comrade, Lee, sprang into action, shielding the blast and sacrificing himself for his partners. Harry's other two comrades, Merlin and Lancelot, took off their masks. Acknowledging Lee's sacrifice, Harry welcomed Lancelot into the Kingsman Agency. Afterward, Harry visited Lee's wife, Michelle, to deliver the heartbreaking news of her husband's demise. He presented her with a Medal of Valor in Lee's honor, with a special number on the back in case she ever needed assistance. He told her to say, Oxford's not brogues to let him know it was her. Sadly, Michelle declined the medal. Harry then turned to Lee's young son, Gary, also known as Eggsy, and passed on the medal. Jumping ahead 17 years to Argentina, Professor James Arnold found himself captive at the hands of a group of thugs. A knock echoed through the room. One thug opened the door and was met by Lancelot. In a swift move, Lancelot took down the thug and proceeded to dispatch the rest, before helping himself to a drink. Another knock sounded at the door. Lancelot went to answer, only to be ruthlessly sliced down the middle by a woman with bladed prosthetic legs named Gazelle. She opened the door for her employer, the billionaire Richmond Valentine. Together, they liberated Arnold and escorted him away. In London, Harry visits a special tailor shop that secretly houses the Kingsman headquarters. There, he meets with Merlin and their boss, Arthur. They grieve Lancelot's passing and discover that those responsible for his death were also involved in troubling events in Uganda and Chechnya. Now let's catch up with Eggsy, who is in his early 20s. He lives with his mom, her new husband Dean, and Eggsy's little sister in a rundown apartment. Money is tight for them. Eggsy goes to the pub with a couple of pals, and they notice Dean's gang nearby. They come over, causing trouble and forcing Eggsy's group to leave. Once outside, Eggsy admits he swiped the gang's car keys. They take the car, have some reckless fun with it, but run into the police. Eggsy tries to evade them by driving the car in reverse for a few blocks. Eventually, Eventually, he crashes into a police car. Eggsy ends up in police custody. He refuses to give up his friend's names and is looking at a hefty 18-month prison sentence. He pulls out a medal hanging around his neck and dials the number on its back. Eggsy recalls the phrase, Oxford's not brogues, and shortly after, Harry comes to his rescue. The two head to the pub where Dean's gang confronts Eggsy once more. Harry calmly instructs them to leave, but the main troublemaker is disrespectful and tells Harry to get lost. Harry strides over to the front door and locks it, saying, Manners maketh man. Using his umbrella, he grabs a glass and swings it at the main troublemaker, swiftly taking down the others, even getting some of them to clash with each other, much to Eggsy's amazement. He gives Eggsy a reassuring pat on the shoulder and departs, confident that Eggsy won't spill the beans about him or what he's just witnessed. Eggsy gets back home, and Dean gets really angry about what happened with his friend's car. Michelle tries to step in but gets pushed away. Harry, who's listening in through a microphone on Eggsy's shoulder, speaks up. He warns Dean to let Eggsy go, or he'll report all of Dean's crimes to to the authorities. Eggsy bolts out of the apartment and manages to escape Dean's gang once again. Eggsy heads to the tailor shop, like Harry suggested. There he meets Harry, who suggests Eggsy become a Kingsman. Eggsy figures he's got nothing to lose and goes with Harry to an underground shuttle that takes them to meet the other recruits. Eggsy quickly makes friends with a girl named Roxy. He gets teased by a boy named Charlie and his pals. Meanwhile, Harry finds Professor Arnold on his way to class and confronts him about his captivity. Suddenly, Arnold screams in pain and his head explodes. Two thugs show up, forcing Harry to set off a hand grenade before leaping out of the window. He's caught in the blast and falls into a coma. Valentine gets wind of Arnold's death and decides to dig into who's snooping around. Later that night, the recruits are in their bunks when the room starts filling up with water. Everyone, except Eggsy, rushes to the toilets to grab pipes and stick them in the toilets for air. Eggsy tries to pry the door open, but can't. So he swims to the mirror and smashes it, letting the water flow into the next room where Merlin was watching. He praises Roxy and Charlie for using the pipes and Eggsy for breaking the mirror. But he says they all failed because they didn't work together, leading to one recruit, Amelia, drowning. Valentine and Gazelle have a meeting with the Scandinavian princess, Tilda, and the Scandinavian prime minister over dinner. Valentine shares his idea to tackle climate change. The prime minister is in favor, but Tilda thinks Valentine is out of his mind. Tilda leaves and alerts the guards. Gazelle swiftly takes them down, using her special legs, and holds Tilda captive. Meanwhile, the recruits are still in their training. They're tasked with training puppies. Eggsy and ends up with a little pug that doesn't quite follow his commands. Despite this, he grows fond of the pup and names it JB. Once Harry gets better, he, Merlin, and Eggsy find out that Arnold had a chip implanted
implanted in his neck, causing his head to explode. The Scandinavian Prime Minister had a similar implant, marked by a scar under his ear, just like Arnold. Merlin traces this back to Valentine. Eggsy remarks on Valentine's intelligence and shows Harry and Merlin a video of Valentine's latest announcement. He plans to give out free SIM cards worldwide. Valentine is also suspected in the disappearances of several world leaders and some famous folks. To dig deeper into Valentine's plans, Harry goes undercover at Valentine's estate. They share a meal from McDonald's and chat about their fondness for James Bond movies. However, Harry doesn't gather much information, aside from spotting one of Valentine's aides carrying a pamphlet for a controversial church in Kentucky. The group of new recruits is narrowed down to Egg C, Roxy, Charlie, and three of Charlie's pals. Their next task involves leaping out of an airplane and hitting a target. Merlin explains that they must figure out what to do if one of their teammates lacks a parachute. In a panic, one recruit deploys his chute too soon. Eggsy has everyone link hands and pull each other's chutes. Only Eggsy and Roxy remain, and they release Roxy's chute at 300 feet. Merlin allows the others, except Charlie, to leave. Later, Eggsy joins Harry at the tailor shop. They enter a room filled with various weapons, including a hand grenade disguised as a lighter, a pen that triggers poison, and a pair of shoes with a blade dipped in poison. Returning to the lobby, they find Valentine and Gazelle present. Valentine tries on a suit from the shop. Their next task takes Eggsy, Roxy, and Charlie to a nightclub to meet a young woman. Unfortunately, they're drugged by an interrogator. Eggsy wakes up tied to train tracks. The interrogator tries to get him to spill about the Kingsman and Harry, but Eggsy keeps silent. The train passes over him, but he's dropped into a small hole. Then Harry emerges, revealing that Eggsy and Roxy have passed the test. They watch as Charlie faces his trial, but he refuses to sacrifice himself for the Kingsman and is sent home. As the final test, Arthur and Merlin instruct Eggsy and Roxy to shoot their dogs. Eggsy can't bring himself to do it, but a gunshot rings out from Roxy. Arthur sends Eggsy home, and he drives back, feeling disappointed. He embraces his mother, but notices she has a black eye. Angry, he heads to the pub to find Dean. Just as Eggsy is about to fight him, the car steers itself to Harry's place. Harry is disappointed in Eggsy for failing the test and reveals that the gun contained a blank. He also discloses that Amelia never drowned and is actually working with the Kingsmen in Berlin. Meanwhile, Roxy is appointed as the new Lancelot. Harry travels to Kentucky to investigate the hate group church. While he listens to the hateful sermon, he eventually makes his way to the door. Meanwhile, a few thousand feet away, Valentine and Gazelle activate a signal on the phones in the church, which are owned by people with Valentine's SIM cards. The signal goes live, causing everyone, including Harry, to succumb to a violent rage and turn on each other. Harry defends himself, resorting to shooting, stabbing, bludgeoning, impaling, and even setting off explosions to fend off the attackers, until he's the last one standing. Eggsy, Merlin, and Arthur watch from their own locations. Outside, Harry confronts Valentine and Gazelle, who explain that the signal from the SIM cards triggers aggression and suppresses inhibitions. Then, Valentine takes out a gun and shoots Harry in the head, killing him. Eggsy screams in horror, while Valentine is visibly shaken by the act of taking a life. Eggsy returns to the tailor shop to meet with Arthur. He brings up how Harry had recorded Valentine's admission. While they raise a glass to honor Harry, Eggsy spots an implant scar under Arthur's ear. Arthur had been convinced by Valentine's idea of a widespread removal of humans, believing that people are harming the planet like a sickness, and wiping them out would help. Arthur had tried to persuade world leaders to join him. They toast to Harry and share a drink. But when Arthur tries to use his pen to activate poison in Eggsy's drink, he realizes it's too late. Eggsy had swapped the drinks earlier, distracting Arthur by asking about the paintings on the wall. Arthur passes away. Eggsy heads to Merlin and Roxy with this crucial intel. Together, they set out to halt Valentine's destructive plan. Roxy is sent up high with two large balloons to send a missile towards one of Valentine's satellites. Meanwhile, Merlin and Eggsy sneak into Valentine's base, where he's hosting a gathering for all those involved in his scheme. Eggsy uses Arthur's invitation and pretends to be him to gain entry. As he passes a cell with Tilda inside, he playfully asks if she'll give him a kiss if he saves the world. Tilda cheekily responds that they can share even more if he succeeds. Eggsy then goes on to save the world. Roxy reaches the satellite, but one of the balloons pops due to the extreme altitude. She manages to fire the missile just before the other balloon bursts, sending her back to the ground. Thankfully, she deploys her parachute and lands safely. Meanwhile, Eggsy locates the Scandinavian PM and puts him to sleep before accessing his laptop. Charlie appears and holds Eggsy at knife point. Quick thinking, Eggsy zaps Charlie with an electric ring on his finger. He rushes back to the plane, dodging and shooting at Valentine's henchmen. Simultaneously, the missile strikes Valentine's satellite, delaying the signal. However, Valentine gains control of another nearby satellite and activates the signal using a biometric scanner, which Merlin can't bypass. The signal spreads worldwide. People in London, Rio de Janeiro, and New York start fighting each other. Eggsy is trapped by gunmen as he tries to halt Valentine. In a desperate 
desperate move, Merlin triggers the implanted devices, causing the heads of both the gunmen and world leaders to explode like fireworks. Eggsy makes his way back to where Valentine and Gazelle are. He shoots at them, briefly distracting Valentine and halting the signal. Gazelle shatters through the glass, trying to harm Eggsy. They engage in a fight, leaping towards each other. Gazelle tries to harm Eggsy with her legs, but Eggsy poisons Gazelle after cutting her with the blade in his shoe. He then tears off one of her legs and hurls it at Valentine's back, piercing him. This deactivates all the signals for good. Merlin and Roxy commend Eggsy for saving the world. He grabs a bottle of champagne with two glasses and heads to Tilda's cell. As the camera shifts its focus, hinting at Eggsy and Tilda, Merlin decides to turn off his video monitor.